Number 45 is asking for max and min values of this ugly function with two different radicals. Awesome. On a closed interval here from 0 to 4. So let's see what we can do. Max and min values, otherwise known collectively as extreme values, only occur at critical points and endpoints. Well, we already know our endpoints right here, but we got to find critical points. That's where your derivative is zero or undefined. So we need to begin here by finding our derivative. All right, guys, this quantity right here is being taken to the one half power. And so its derivative is going to be one half times the same base, x plus x squared. Drop the power by one. That's a negative one half times the derivative within. That derivative is going to be a 1 plus that derivative there, a 2x. Whew, that was fun. Okay, and then minus. Now this would be a 2 times the derivative of the square root of x. I'm hoping by now you guys know that the derivative of square root of x is 1 over 2 root x, but that 2 there is going to cancel out the 2 on the bottom, so it's just going to be 1 over the square root of x. Now, I think, I think, yeah, that could probably be cleaned up just a little bit right here. So that first big term, I'm going to make that into a fraction now with a 1 plus 2x on top, and then a 2 on the bottom, that comes from the 1 half, and then a square root of x plus x squared. And then all of that is minus 1 over root x. Whew! That's kind of a pain right there, but all right. That's our derivative. I'm not going to try, am I? Oh, it actually wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, yeah, knowing where I'm going with this, those denominators are actually more similar than you think. The square root of x plus x squared, um, what we could do here, guys, is factor out an x there and make that a, nope, 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 and make that a 1 plus x inside the parentheses right there. And then you can split that up and make it the square root of x times the square root of 1 plus x. So here's what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to erase the denominator that I had, ooh, and that one right there, and I'm going to slide this red guy into its place right here, okay? And that tells me I'm closer than I thought to a common denominator. I'm going to multiply the second fraction now by a 2, and then a square root of 1 plus x on both the denominator and, of course, in the numerator as well. Now, why am I doing that? That is going to give me the common denominator that I want in order to put these two fractions together. So what's going to happen here, guys? The common denominator is going to be 2. Actually, I think I'm going to put that back the way it was times the square. Mm, no, I lied. I'm going to leave that factored there. Changing my mind, sorry. 2 times the square root of x times the square root of 1 plus x. i got to follow my own rule. Factored form in a denominator is always better for us. And then in the numerator, we've just got the 1 plus the 2x right there, and then a minus 2 times the square root of 1 plus x. I don't think there's anything we can do to simplify that numerator. So, okay, guys, there is our derivative written as one big ugly fraction. Now, what do we do from here? All right, critical points come from where your derivative is either zero or undefined. So, as I talked about on the previous video I just made, I'm going to kind of cut this problem in half right now. The derivative equaling zero, y prime equals zero, is, is when the numerator of your denominator, one plus two x minus two times the square root of one plus x is equal to zero. The derivative being undefined, that happens when your denominator, two root x times the square root of one plus x, when that denominator is equal to zero. That would make the derivative undefined. So what am I going to focus on here first? That thing I've got on the left over here looks like a monstrosity. And I'm kind of thinking, to be realistic with you guys, we would probably use our calculator to solve that. I think it could be done by hand, but it would give us a quadratic and be kind of a pain. And, and yeah, and I, I think we're not going to take the time to do it that way. This one, though, I think we could actually solve pretty quickly. You've got a three-factor expression now whose product is equal to zero. So you would take each factor, set that equal to zero, and solve. Well, the first one is kind of dumb here, guys. One plus x equals zero. Two will never equal zero, so forget about that. This will happen if x is equal to zero. This will happen 
yeah, if x is equal to negative 1. Now, quick check though, guys, are both of those values in your domain here from 0 and negative 1? I see right here, oh, no, I'm sorry, I don't even need to think that hard. They told us we're only looking here from 0 to 4. What I noticed, the negative 1 doesn't work right here because it gives you an imaginary result. But 0 is in the domain of this function, so I've got to keep that value right here, but throw this one out. Now, as I said, this one on the left is really, really messy, so I think we're going to use our calculator to solve that. So, whoa, sorry about that, everybody. That was probably disorienting. All right, so I'm going to go to, let's see, my Inspire Cast app, which I have here somewhere. Sorry, guys, I didn't know I was doing this. And I'm going to add a new thing right here, and let's do a calculator page. All right, and here we go. We're going to solve this thing, everybody. So I'm going to go to my Algebra menu here and go Solve. And then, all right, what was the equation that we just had right here, guys? 1 plus 2x, and then minus 2 times that. That's right there. So a 1 plus 2x, and then a minus, and I think that was a 2 times the square root of, where did it go? 1 plus x. All right. And all of that was going to equal 0. 2 times the square root of 1 plus x. All right. Let me get out of that radical right there. All right. It is equal to 0. Got to put a comma right here. And we want to solve this thing for x. So we'll hit enter. Oh, that actually was better than I thought. We ended up with root 3 over 2. Now remember, our domain right here is just x values that were between 0 and 4. Root 3 over 2 fits the bill right there, guys. So we get x is equal to positive root 3 over 2, and that's included as well. So we came up with a grand total of three critical points, but we had to cross this one out because it wasn't in the domain, so only two critical points that we actually care about. Okay, what do we do next, everybody? I'm going to switch back to a black pen right here. Come on. All right. And I'm going to kind of draw a line right here. And now it's testing time. We're going to take the original function here, which they just called y, and we're going to test it at both of the two critical points that we just found and at its Boop, 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 at its domain, at its endpoints right here from 0 to 4. And I like to set these up in order here. So 0 is the first value we're going to deal with right here. So I'm just going to set this up and write y of 0 equals. Then, oh, interesting, I'm sorry, I thought four values, but 0 was one of the critical points. That's also an endpoint, so it kind of does double duty. So then the only internal critical point that I found is root 3 over 2. I got to test that one. And our right endpoint now is going to be y of 4. And that's what we're looking for. So I got to come up with y values at all three of those points right there. And come on. Here we go. My question here is, is it worth it to plug those numbers in manually? Well, the zero isn't that hard, right? That's a zero. That's a zero. Square root of zero is zero. Two times zero is zero. Hey, I got that one, guys. All right. And we end up with y of zero is equal to zero. Unfortunately, ooh, the root three over two is going to be a mess. Maybe the four isn't that bad. Let me play with that one a little bit. We've got a four. Uh, let's see here, guys. That's a 4 plus a 16. So we end up with the square root of 20 and then minus 2 times the square root of 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Ugh, that's not really pretty. Let me write that down, okay? I mean, it's right. The square root of 20 minus 4 is what we get right here. And what you probably want to do is just come up with a really quick approximation of that, guys. It doesn't have to be close. Uh, the square root of 20, 20 is between 16 and 25. So this is probably in the neighborhood of about 4.5. Minus 4 is going to be roughly 0 0.5. I don't know that that number is exactly accurate, but I definitely know that the square Square root of 20 is more than 4. So this number is more than 0, which makes it greater than this value right here. But putting in that root 3 over 2, that's a mess. So I tell you what I'm going to do right now, guys. Let me go ahead and show you what I would expect you to do here as well. I'd go to the calculator, and I would define this original function. 
So where's our define feature, everybody? Uh, we are going to, oops, not under the algebra menu, action, here we go, define. And I would call this thing, even though it was, uh, it was written as Y, I would probably write it here as, is it there? I, no, wait a minute. Is it under variable? No, it's hiding somewhere, guys. I know it's here. All right, there, there. Nope, it's not there. It's somewhere. No, it is under the, no, it's under the X. God dang it, there it is. All right, so we're going to define, I forgot a space right there. All right, so define. Oh, jeez. All right, space bar right there. Okay, gotcha. And then back to this. All right, so we're going to define f1 of x, here we go, to b equals the original function that we had right here uh, in this problem, which was, hang on, I lost it, I lost it. Let's see. We were, I can't even remember what problem we were working on here, guys. It was number, do, 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 do. okay, number 45. That's the one we were looking at. All right, x plus x squared and then minus a 2 root x. All right, so back to the calculator right here. It was equal to, we had a square root of and an x plus an x squared. Get out of that radical, okay, got it, and then a minus 2 times the square root of x. Okay, so there's the original function, and just to make sure that we did this right, let me go ahead and evaluate f1 of 0, which I was pretty sure was going to equal 0, good, and we also did by hand f1 of 4, where we ended up with that value of 2 root 5, they, they simplified the square root of uh, 20, we could just round that real quick and get, uh, yeah, positive 0.47. I said 0.5, so pretty close. Now what we needed, though, a little bit of a pain here. This is what I needed the calculator for. F1 of, all right, what, guys? The square root of 3, get out of there, and then divided by 2. So, oh my gosh, that gave us that. I think I would prefer that number as a decimal. Negative 0.590 is what that one would be if we rounded it. So let's do that. Negative 0.590. Negative 0.590. Nine, zero. So remember guys, the directions for this batch of problems just said here, find the minimum and the maximum value. So I look at these three numbers and one of those is the maximum, one of those is the minimum. The highest value I see is this one right over here, this square root of 20 minus 4. So that is your maximum. Notice I'm not circling this because that was a rounded value. The minimum is the lowest of those three, which is the only one that's negative right over here. Now, that's really all we need to do for the answer. But to be clear, uh, clear here, guys, this is an absolute min. This is an absolute max. This value right over here is the y value where your function starts. And then the next important thing it hits is lower than that. What we have right here, guys, is a relative maximum. The function started here at a y value of 0, went down to a value of 0 0.590, and then went back up to its highest y value of root 20 minus 4. So you didn't need to provide this in the answer. This is what they wanted here, but that's just a little way for you guys to, to make sense or interpret of what we came up with for that result. Okay, so that was number 45.